Welcome to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm speaking to you from New York City on the 18th of February, 2020. And I do like to remind you each week that I write a newsletter called Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. It focuses on the young companies, the small cap companies that are finding gold and silver and other metals in the ground. It's a very exciting time uh, with gold uh, today uh, hitting $1,600. It's certainly the environment is certainly uh, better than many that I've had in the past and very exciting time. So you might want to consider signing up for my letter, uh, J. Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. Go to miningstocks.com to do that. also like to put in a plug for Chen Lin. What is Chen buying? What is Chen selling? Chen focuses on biotechs as well as the energy and the uh, precious metals uh, mining shares as well. Uh, what is Chen buying? What is Chen selling? Go to chenpicks.com for that. And um, also Michael Oliver's uh, excellent newsletter, MSA. Uh, we'll be talking to Michael in just a moment. And um, I do want to thank each of you for listening to the show, making it one of the more popular shows on the Voice America Business Channel. Also, encourage you to send along your questions and comments. Whatever you have to say about this show, send it to questions for Taylor at gmail.com. Questions, the number four, Taylor at gmail.com. Of course, we do want to thank and must thank our sponsors because they make this show economically viable. Today's sponsors, Eli Gold Royalties, Great Bear Resources, Hannon Metals, Irving Resources, Lion One Metals, Novo Resources, and Sitka Gold Corp. I've titled today's show, In Search of Monster Gold Deposits. Dr. Quentin Henning, Eric Coffin, Gwen Preston, and Michael Oliver are guests this week. Highly regarded exploration geologist, indeed, Dr. Quentin Henning is, and his, uh, his idea with regard to exploration projects is go big or go home, because actually the payoff uh, in discovering a large gold deposit or a precious metals deposit or any kind of deposit actually is much greater relative to risks than in exploring and developing something of a smaller scale. Risks are pretty much the same, but the payoff is much less. So Dr. Quentin uh, is really focused on looking for the monsters. And uh, he's convinced that the Tutavu uh, alkaline project that being, discor- being explored by Lion One, Lion One Mines has a potential to morph into a massive high-grade gold deposit like some of the other very large multi-million company-making deposits uh, around the world. Quinton will be with me in uh, the second half of today's uh, – actually, the second segment of today's show in just a few minutes uh, from right now after our first commercial break. Eric Coffin and Gwen Preston are two of the leading newsletter writers at the Metals Investor Forum, uh, and it's always good to hear a couple of their best investment ideas in the junior exploration sector, and they'll be sharing those with us today. I'm really interested in hearing what Eric has to say about the most uh, the most important financial markets, like the treasury markets, the equity markets, as well as how those markets may be impacting gold's move. Uh, today, as I mentioned, it's over 1600 And I'm also interested in hearing Gwen's take on the market for financing these junior exploration stocks. You know, the, they live by financing. Until they find something of value in the ground, these companies have to rely on people that believe in their stories, believe in the ability to find deposits of value. Uh, so it is a high-risk, high-return game, no doubt. When you When you find big deposits, it can be very rewarding, but in the meantime, Companies have to continue raising capital through the equity markets, and that's what Gwen is involved with directly herself. Uh, So I look forward to hearing what she has to say about the conditions for uh, for financing these junior exploration stocks, as well as a a couple of her better ideas with regard to uh, some exciting new uh, ventures out there. Um, Meantime, though, I'm glad to tell you that Michael Oliver is back with us today. Thanks for joining me, Michael. Hi, Jay. Good to be back. It is good to be back, and uh, it's good to be back and have you back uh, on a day when gold has uh, breached the $1,600 level. I know you don't usually try to understand the fundamental dynamics underlying a market. You leave that up to others, and you let the markets do the talking. Uh, But do you have any thoughts today as to what might be triggering $1,600? I know it wasn't totally unexpected. Uh, It wasn't unexpected at all from your point of view. But uh, any thoughts about what might be going on today? Not really. Uh, I think that the same factors are in play. Uh, I do think now the, by the way, we, you know, we fumbled a bit. MSA did uh, late in December. We thought that Bloomberg was ready to turn up Bloomberg Commodity Index. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it fumbled and pulled back, didn't make a new low. It's just still in its base action in the last few years. 
we thought that might be a contributory factor for gold if it, if it could engage on the upside. And the dollar also broke below some things, but then it's since rallied back up a percent and a half, two percent off of where it was in late December. Mm-hmm. So, but despite the fact that those two events didn't engage, gold has advanced back to the highs. Now remember, in January, we had the panicky news two days in a row. It was like Monday and a Wednesday, I think it was, a, the Iran news. Yeah. And you had uh, amateur buying at that point where people were getting into the market freshly or covering their shorts, more likely. And so you panicked gold on the upside sharply that day. And uh, then it pulled back, pulled back all the way back to 1540 uh, after reaching above 1600 in early January. And everybody thought, oh, well, that was a blow-off top in gold, and it's, you know, and we argued, no, it wasn't. It was just, it got overdone too quick on a piece of news that really is irrelevant to the major trend in gold. Uh, and sure enough, we fought our way back up in a nice, steady, strong-armed manner since then. And we traded over 1600 today, and I think the settlement on Feb Gold is probably going to be about $1,600. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means gold's return to top tick, and it did it unemotionally. It did it resolutely. And that, that indicates to me that, no, 1600 was not some spike high. It was just a, a, a brief overrun back in January. And we've mm-hmm. now earned our way back up there in a, in a calm manner without mm-hmm. help from those two other markets, namely upturning mm-hmm. commodities and downturn in the dollar. I think another factor that's in play out there, of course, is the big one. It's the one everybody's paying attention to, and that's the U.S. stock market in particular. Mm -hmm. which is, in my view, the biggest bubble uh, out there. Uh, We've had bubbles in the past 20 and 30 years in the stock market, but they've been narrowly focused. Like in 2000, it was uh, dot-com. It wasn't the broad market. In fact, there was no blow-off in the S&P. It was only in the high-tech, the Internet sector. Uh, And then in 2007, when the market turned down, it wasn't really a bubble, except in real estate. This time, Mm -hmm. it's actually the U.S. stock market. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we're in a unique position here where when this bubble breaks, and I think it's in the process of trying to right now, despite the steadiness today, that it's stalled up here. And I think any percent or two downturn from current S&P levels is likely to begin an evacuation of that market. There are a lot of triggers below the S&P right now that could really get it going on the downside. And they're not far below. And I think even a couple percent wobble at this point to get that going. Well, what does that mean for gold? Well, it means uh, further evacuation of money from the stock market into the alternatives. No. You know what those alternatives are, U.S. government bonds, gold, and also to some extent Bitcoin. Um, those are the main alternative markets, and I think that some of that money is already moving. But in particular, it will move a little more quickly and a little more ferociously <laughs> once you start to wobble the S&P back down. So I'd be watching the stock market right now for further signs of a boost to the gold market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the title of your uh, 360 weekend report was Blow Off, Price Fragility, Now a Focus. And that's what you're looking at very carefully, I guess, Michael. And I, Yes. You know, I, I, I look at this equity market day in and day out. Very often it starts out very weak in the morning, and then it rallies. It rallies late in the day. And here I see where – actually, I see the NASDAQ is back in positive territory at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dow is crawling its way back. Uh, S&Ps are down only 0.2% now. Uh, and so it looks like it's doing it once again. It just uh, it seems to defy gravity, doesn't it? But at some point <laughs> yeah, in time, you'd think it, it – yeah. If you go back to November, we, in early November, we issued a report saying the blow-off is beginning, meaning mm-hmm. a vertical move by the stock market. Mm-hmm. But a blow-off is a negative event, meaning it's glorious while it occurs. But when yeah. it's over, it terminates – the opposite way. It doesn't correct. It collapses. And so a blow-off is like the end of some glorious uh, bull market we've had for 11 years now, and we've gone vertical since November. But if you'll examine the price action since early November, we go up and we make a high, we pull back maybe 100 points or so, and then turn around and make another new high in the blow-off process. Mm -hmm. But you don't make a marginally higher high than the previous rally peak. You usually zap it up another 100 S&P points. Uh-huh. And you pull back again. Remember in late January, we had about a 120-point drop from mid-January to late January. Then in early February, we earned our way back to a new high. But this time, rather than exploding above the January high, we've nested above it. So mm-hmm. the tonal difference this time, this new high we made versus the January high, 
has only been a percent and a half or so above the January high, and we've spun our wheels up here for like a week and a half now. Mm-hmm. So if the bulls don't get it together and launch another 50 or 100 S&P points, and if instead they find themselves rolling back down through the January high, mm-hmm. so the S&P is 33, 37, then I think they got a problem. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm focused on right now, is actually the yeah. price action. Yeah, that seems to be in direct contrast with what, how you were describing the gold market now, uh, hitting 1,600, falling back, and going back up to 1,600 in a non-eventual, in a non-emotional manner, and then uh, also doing it despite the fact that it had this wind at its face, this uh, up stock market, a, a stronger stock market, a stronger dollar. It is uh, pretty impressive for gold. It, it would suggest that there's a lot of strength there in that market, I guess, huh? Yes, I think there is, and I think it's for great big reasons, not minor temporary reasons. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, reasons well, we all know. Yes, indeed. Well, we have we certainly around the world we're seeing a, I think a, a weaker economic scenario than is uh, than is broadcast uh, on um, on the mainstream media here for sure. Um, and uh, and this virus isn't helping either with the supply chain being shut down in many places. I think. A very serious situation potentially. I mean, I have no idea about the uh, about the epidemic, uh, whether it is or isn't, or you know, what do I know about that? All I know is that uh, 70 million Chinese are being quarantined or set uh, uh, made to stay in their houses and can't go to work, and that has to have some repercussions, unfortunately, yeah. for the global markets. I would think so. You know, you, you look at the charts, and the charts speak to you. They tell you things are happening, and then later you can go back sometimes and figure out what's happening but uh, michael want to thank you very much for your insights again always welcome uh always uh, very much appreciated and so we want to thank you very much for being with us again we'll look to do it in another couple of weeks or so i suppose thank, thank you very thank much you. thanks so much Jay. bye-bye